coming up on All Access. Our goal now is to prepare the team uh, for training camp uh, and then continue to, for them to prepare. Guys out there making plays, um, asking questions, like I said, playing fast, and um, that's what you want to see out of a group. I'm proud of him on the field, but what he did do off the field as being a God-fearing man, a hard-working man, a loving husband, a great father, and the best of son there is. They're back. The real offseason has begun for the Patriots. Next time we set eyes on the team will be the start of training camp. Hello and welcome to Patriots All Access presented by Geico. I'm Steve Burton. Earlier this month, New England wrapped up their mandatory minicamp with several days of practice and meetings. Dan Roach recaps for us and previews some interesting storylines before camp kicks off. Volunteer workouts, OTAs, and mandatory minicamp are in the books for the 2022 Patriots. And overall, everyone seems pleased with the progress. We made strides, but we know what we want to get to, and that's going to take a lot of work beyond just OTAs. Um, and we're going to get there. The way a team is a good team or continues to become a good team is you have to have practices where both sides are kind of throwing haymakers. We have a lot of guys that want to keep getting better. Um, it's been fun to watch guys that have been able to compete and, and play at a high level this spring. Our goal now is to prepare the team uh, for training camp uh, and then continue to, for them to prepare uh, in the uh, time before training camp and then, you know, get off to a good start um, in July and August. Meanwhile, here are three questions that need to be addressed when training camp commences. Who's starting at outside cornerback? Jalen Mills, who started 16 games last year, returns, while veterans Terrence Mitchell, Malcolm Butler, Joan Williams, and Sean Wade are in the mix, as well as rookies Jack Jones and Marcus Jones. Next up, quarterback. Can Mac Jones take the next step from his rookie campaign to year two? He looks really good. His stomach is gone, <laughs> and he looks really good. He's he's definitely a, you know, a pro's pro now. Like he. You know, when you're a rookie, you just don't know until you go through it for a year. Next question, who will emerge to help at linebacker among the group of Anthony Jennings, Ronnie Perkins, Raekwon McMillan, Cameron McCrone, and Josh Uche? Each guy has an opportunity and, you know, they have a chance to maximize their talent. You know, just putting that hard hat on and going to work, that's, that's the approach we're taking. As for training camp, Patriots players officially report on Tuesday, July 26th. The first full practice open to the public is on Wednesday, July 27th, with practices also scheduled for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of that week as well. For more information, head to Patriots.com slash training camp. For Patriots All Access, I'm Dan Roach. Coming up on All Access. It's the news everyone has been waiting for. But first, we sit down with defensive back Jalen Mills. The meetings have been great, practice has been great, and uh, just feeling more comfortable within this game. You're watching Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, official bank of the New England Patriots. By Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots, proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. And by Pepsi. That's what I like. Pepsi, official soft drink of the New England Patriots. I'm Lauren Spencer with your latest Patriots Social Media Minute. The Celtics' NBA Finals run unfortunately didn't end the way that Boston sports fans might have hoped, but they still received plenty of love from the Patriots along the way. 
Speaking of showing support for the home team, Damian Harris tried his hand on the pitcher's mound before a Red Sox game earlier this month and even met stars from The Office, Mindy Kaling and BJ Novak. And to leave you with some incredibly wholesome content, this is Jackson, a Devin McCourty and Patriots superfan. His older sister shared a video on TikTok this month stating that Jackson has autism and would soon be celebrating a birthday, which caught the attention of Devin McCourty himself. Devin invited Jackson to Gillette Stadium for a special meet and greet and even gifted him a pair of game-worn cleats. That's all for our latest Patriot Social Media Minute. I'm Lauren Spencer. Joining me now in the studio, I've got Jalen Mills alongside me. Jalen, they say it's easier year two under your second year in this system. How's year two treating you? Really good, actually. Um, the meetings have been great, practice has been great, and uh, just feeling more comfortable within the scheme. What's the difference for you from year one to year two in, the, in this Patriot system? I think just really learning the verbiage, um, being somewhere for five years and then coming here, the different verbiage, the different coverages, um, knowing which spot guys are going to be in in certain situations, and, and just going out there and playing fast. In the NFL, there's a lot of turnover. There's a lot of new additions in this room for you. Mm -hmm. What do you see when you look at the competition around the room? A um, lot of guys who want to go out there and compete, and that's what you want at the end of the day. Guys who want to go out there and compete, regardless of what happens in the first play. The next play is the same fire, the same intensity. want to go out there and win. What have you seen out on the field so far, all of this new group? Yeah, guys out there making plays. Um, asking questions, like I said, playing fast, and um, that's what you want to see out of the group. Jalen, I see that you still have your green hair. Yes. You're known as the Green Goblin. Yes. Do you have any aspirations to potentially change your hair color? There are, there are slight possibilities in there. I don't want to give those, those clues and hints out, but there are slight possibilities for sure. You have a little bit of time left in the off season to get to enjoy yourself. Do you have any plans? I think probably go Good vacation, probably about a week vacation, thinking about uh, Turks and Caicos. Are you more of a beach vibe for vacation? 100%. I'm definitely a beach bum. want to sit out there all day, tan a little bit, you know, get in the water, swim around, but definitely a beach bum. Do you ever take vacations and do things differently, like maybe go to the mountains, go skiing? I'm definitely adventurous. I've had a couple vacations where I've swam with tigers, swam with elephants. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely adventurous when it comes to vacation sometimes. What's the most adventurous thing that you've done? I would say definitely swimming with the tigers. No, swimming with the sharks. I swam <laughs> with the sharks in the open water. That was definitely the most, most eager intensity that I've got out of a vacation. How did you come up with the idea to go swimming with sharks? I'm a fan of them. Um, I have a whole leg uh, tattoo sleeve of straight sharks. I love their mentality. I love what they represent, um, their curiosity, um, the fear that, that people have um, of them. And they're actually not scary animals at all. They kind of mind their business. Um, but that's, that's kind of the story behind it. Do you feel like you represent a shark when you're out on the field? 100%, 100%. I, I definitely do. I try to take that mindset. As a shark, they always swim forward. They can't go backwards. Um, they always eat. And as, as much as they eat, the longer they live, the bigger they grow. So I take that as far as knowledge. The longer I live, I, I want to have more knowledge. I want to get smarter. I want to I wanna progress. I don't ever want to degress, so for sure. Thank you so much, Jalen, and I hope you have an adventurous rest of your off season as yeah. well. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more on Patriots All Access right after this break.
Congratulations to Patriots owner Robert Kraft, who earlier this spring was honored with the Sports Business Journal Lifetime Achievement Award. To be here tonight receiving this honor from the ultimate authority in the sports industry is something I never would have imagined as a young man. I want to thank you so much once again for this honor. Thank you. Welcome back to All Access, presented by GEICO. August will prove to be a busy month for former Patriots and Pro Football Hall of Fame nominee Richard Seymour. We spent some time with Seymour and his family earlier this month as he prepares for the honor of a lifetime. Hey, it's my honor and my privilege to welcome you, my brother, to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Richard Seymour. I'm honored to be a part of the family. It's myself, it's Bryant Young, you know, Tony Baselli, Leroy Butler, Coach Dick Vermeil. I said, you know, hey, I'll take our class in a bar fight. I teased Ty, I said, Ty had the head of prima donna, you know, him and Jim <laughs> Bailey and, and all of the guys. So I, I said, you know, hey, we'll take y'all in a bar fight any day. I'm proud of him on the field, but what he did do off the field as being a God-fearing man, a hard-working man, a loving husband, a great father, and the best of son there is. Now, that makes my heart jump for joy. The NFL, the Hall of Fame, they made no mistake in choosing Richard. It's just a great honor, and he it's a deserving honor that I think that he's made. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, official bank of the New England Patriots, by Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots, proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off, and by Pepsi. That's what I like. Pepsi, official soft drink of the New England Patriots. Patriots fans know how much their head coach loves lacrosse. Earlier this month, Coach Belichick was honored at the Tawarton Awards ceremony with their Spirit Award for his contributions to the game. I love lacrosse. Yeah, I think that's why we're all here. Uh, love the game, love the sport, love football, but there's no huddles. There's, there's not too many timeouts. Um, the ball goes out of bounds, comes right back in. It just, the game just, just goes. Welcome back to Patriots All Access, everyone. I'm Bob's Disc Conference Studios with Mike Reese and Paul Perillo. Good to see you guys. Good, Good to you, see Steve. Steve. Right out of the gate, now that minicamp is over, Paul, what was your biggest takeaway? You know, to me, it was Mac Jones. Uh, and, you know, I, I think we all were pretty comfortable with his rookie season, but I think he looks a lot more comfortable just in his own skin. I think... The leadership is, is kind of evident. He's doing an awful lot on offense, Mike. I think when you see him sort of interacting with the receivers, running routes, I know, Mike, you wrote a lot about that. Um, just he seems like he is as much involved with the implementation of this offense as anybody else. There's no pads in these practices, right. so we don't see the offensive lineman banging. But what caught my attention was the flip at offensive tackle. Trent Brown was at left tackle. Isaiah Wynn, who had started at left tackle, was at right tackle, and sort of the backdrop to that is that Isaiah hadn't been at the voluntary part of the mm. off-season program, so maybe we're going to see a flip here coming into this season. We'll flip this. Now that we're in the dead zone, oh. what's your biggest question mark going forward? You know, that's a good question. I, I know there's a lot of focus on the offensive coaching staff, right? The play caller, 
the coordinator, and I think that's a major storyline, don't get me wrong, but to me, I look at the roster itself, Steve, and I wonder if there's enough talent, and, and I would say depth of talent. You know, I, I know individually I think they have players, right. um, and, you know, at, at, at all positions, but particularly on defense, I wonder where the depth is at linebacker at, in the secondary in particular. They haven't been great stopping the run up front, so I'm just kind of worrying about the, the depth overall if there's enough here. And I think I'll go to the coaching part that Paul referenced. To me, I'm really curious how this is all going to work. Like... Matt Patricia with the offensive line, but you would see him at practice looking down at some card and then relaying a play in to Mac right. Jones. Joe Judge with the quarterbacks, you'd see him look down at a, a card and relay something in. Bill Belichick was always around that area. Like, who's going to call the plays and how is this going to work with this transition from Josh McDaniels? Though? Do you think they figured that out yet or do you think they're just trying to keep everybody guessing? I think that Bill probably knows, but I'm not sure that that has been communicated to the t to the team itself. But I think Bill has to have an idea of who's going to be calling the plays. I think that's exactly right. And also I think Bill wants to assess how it's going and leave himself a little bit of an out if he wants to change his mind and go in a different direction. There are a bunch of names on this Patriots squad. Give me one player that you're going to look at that others wouldn't look at so much. Maybe an off-the-radar type guy. Yeah. Jack Jones. Uh, I, I thought he reminded me, Mike, back in 2014 of Malcolm Butler, who yeah. came in, didn't really know a lot about him. Um, obviously, Jones was a draft pick, and, and Malcolm Butler wasn't, but just started showing up, making plays, competitive, um, really physical, I think kind of got under the skin of some of the receivers. So I want to watch him, Steve, in training camp when pads come on mm -hmm. to see if the, the performance is similar. That's a great choice, and, and Thanks, I would have I would, I would <laughs> picked it because I think he can compete for a starting job at corner, yeah. which is a huge question for them. I'll go to the other side okay. and Devontae Parker. So they trade for Parker you know, from the Dolphins, and we saw him make that play in practice where he reached over uh, Jalen Mills for sort of a jump ball contested yeah. catch down the field. No receiver has more tight window catches in the NFL over the last five years than Devontae Parker. Put him in the mix with Kendrick Bourne, Nelson Aguilar, Jacoby Myers, Tyquan Thornton. Maybe you got a little something with numbers and a diverse set of receivers. So Parker's going to be a guy I'm watching. All right, guys, thank you very much. We'll see you when training camp begins. Sounds great. Absolutely. That'll do it for this edition of Patriots All Access. For Mike Reese and Paul Perillo, I'm Steve Burton. Have a great week, everybody.